Oh yeah, it's Lisa Lampanelli, everybody. I have my new shoes on. Welcome. I am the host of this episode of Build. Big hand for me, damn it, people. Come on. I am thrilled today to be interviewing the author of my brand new favorite book. Now, I had never read her books before because they are about romance. And I do not believe in romance and love. I'm divorced twice, and I hate love. However, when I heard this book was about friendship, I said, well, my friends are my family, because no one likes their family. I said to myself, I'm reading this. It was also <laughs> brought to my attention that this book was about people with weight struggles. As, as you know, Lisa Lampanelli has gone through 57 years of weight loss and trauma, 372 pounds I've gained and lost over my whole life, and that's a lot of weight. That is 17 Sarah Jessica Parkers. <laughs> so I read this book, fell in love, met the author, fell deeper in love in a platonic way, not lesbian way yet. And she is here today. She is a bestseller on the New York Times list, on the freaking USA Today list, and her book has been translated into a dozen languages. Are you kidding me? I can't even speak English. So here's a clip of my good friend, Kristen Higgins. Kristen Higgins. Thank you so much. I totally have her home phone number. <laughs> Kristen, I love this book. Thank you. Oh my God, it is totally my favorite. That's what I said in the intro, and I totally mean it. They did not write that for me. I loved it. I flew through it. It was like every character in this book, it felt like parts of me. Thank you know, you. now I know this is a little departure for you because you mm -hmm. had originally been such a fantastic best selling romance novelist. What made you make the switch? And also, was it uncomfortable for you to do that? Because mm -hmm. changing anything in life is hard. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I started out writing romance, romantic comedy and very quickly started to incorporate other elements of life into my books because, you know, that's life. Mm -hmm. You don't get to just focus on running into the guy at the gas station that you like uh, over and over and over. And uh, as I... Uh, this is my 18th book. Wow. So... I was moving into women's fiction, and I really felt that the time was right, and for me personally, and also just where we are in society, to write a book about the pressure that women feel to be a certain size, mm. look a certain way, and how hard that is, and how we struggle to accept ourselves and really love ourselves, and the ripple effects that all that negative publicity has on us. Right, right. Yeah. So is... You know, we've talked off camera and just as friends about struggling with mm -hmm. weight our whole lives. Is uh, part of it just like, okay, this book's in me now. Mm -hmm. I've worked on this my whole life. I finally, I'm going to just put it out there that this is part yeah. of me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm one of those women who has gained and lost uh, maybe not 17 Jessica Parkers, but <laughs> you know, like maybe four or five. Right. Um, and, uh, and constantly told that, I was somehow wrong. You know, the first time being at a little beauty pageant when I was four years old, mm. um, and uh, my mom thought I was adorable and put me in it, and I was in a little bathing suit, and I felt so happy and proud until the judge came up, looked at us 12 girls, and pointed at me and said, you're out, you're too chubby. Oh, wow. Just like that, you know? So I all of a sudden, I was told for the first time, like so many of us women are, you're not right in the eyes of the world. Mm. And that was like a long journey of thinking about my weight way too much, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing at the same time, I'm not supposed to care this much. It's who I am and what I do that matters. And yet I was constantly saying, I've got to lose weight for this. I've got to, I've got to, you know, slim down. I've got to really get in shape now. And um, 
you know, for all the effort that I put into that and all the time, I think like I could have mastered 20 languages. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's terrible of those things just stick with us. You know, usually, I mean, four years old, right. you say, I mean, and the thing is, it's something that you remember for the rest of your life. Yes. I mean, I remember I used to think I had just that my face was fine. And, you know, until Claire Liptak, and if you're watching, I hate you still. She, <laughs> in like freshman year of high school, was like, oh, you have a big nose. And I was like, oh my God, I had no idea. Right. Like, you right. just don't hear that at home. I mean, if you're kind of brought up in a decent well, household. So, I did. <laughs> but it's, it's very sad. So, it, it, it's, um, I loved in this book how. Even though it is about a serious subject and those things have happened to those women, the three characters throughout the book, um, it still does have a sense of humor, mm -hmm. which is great. Because I think writing this, um, you have to sort of go, okay, there's still a humorous part of it. We still have to have scenes where it's a little levity. Right. So was that an effort on your part or was that just kind of like, oh, this sort of comes out naturally. I don't have to add it in. It just kind of happens. Yeah, I think, you know, all my books have that in common, that they're funny mm -hmm. in parts and that they're really poignant in parts too. And mm -hmm. again, you know, that's life and those emotions are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So to write a book like this about these struggles and, and um, self image issues and negative self talk and the, you know, bombardment that we have from society, always making us feel this way, Writing that without humor would have been really hard to read. Right, right. Um, and the women in this book are accomplished and lovely and intelligent, and they're really good friends. Um, so, you know, the, there's a natural camaraderie there. There's that family mm -hmm. of choice, and um, and you know, a lot of you know, a lot of enjoyment of yeah. food, family, friendship. And what I like too is it doesn't demonize food. Because food is one of the great pleasures of life. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're too old for sex like I am, <laughs> yeah. you, say, you say, that thing has dried up, let me eat a cake. <laughs> I enjoy a cake more than I enjoy anything else. <laughs> so it, it really doesn't say food is bad and food is right. evil and skinny is good versus, no. you know, skinny versus fat. It doesn't right. really pit either one is right or wrong. Right. And, you know, one of the characters in the book is a personal chef. She's from a big Italian family. Food is love. Mm -hmm. And and every family event focuses on food because that's how you show love and you share meals. And and I think a lot of us have that family background. Yes. Um, you know, for the other uh, character, food is an addiction. Mm -hmm. It becomes, you know, to that point where she is a true food addict. And food is her comfort, her friend, um, her hobby, and it gets out of hand. Right. And then the third character, Georgia, is, I think, a more uh, common sort where she is always measuring, weighing, thinking about if I have these calories, I have to make up for them. And, you know, I uh, can't, can't, and can't just view food as food, which is such a shame. It you know? really is sad. It's, um, you know, as you said, you know, we could have pretty much between us cured cancer with the yeah. time we've spent <laughs> weighing and measuring food or getting on a scale. And mm -hmm. instead of just looking at ourselves with a little more compassion. Right. And I think by the end of the book, what I like is that the two surviving women really you know, they're coming, they're, they came a little closer to liking themselves, which I think yeah. the goal really isn't external, it's internal. Right. And no one in the book loses weight in order to get to that self-acceptance. Mm. In fact, Georgia, who is losing weight in the book, is losing weight for the wrong reasons. She's got a medical problem that she's ignoring. Right. And, um, and so by the end of the book, she's actually gaining weight to be healthier. And, right. um, and Marley looks at herself and says, you know what? I'm done waiting till that magical day when I'm thin. I'm just going to appreciate my body. It works. It serves me. I'm going to love it. And yeah. and she just makes that decision. And it's not as clear cut as that she has to constantly adjust. But she she makes that decision of, I've spent way too much time here. I'm going to focus on the things that really matter. See, what I loved about her, I always wished I was that woman who could, at, no matter at what weight, I could wear a T-shirt. I still want to print up T-shirts that say, say it loud, I'm fat and proud, mm -hmm. because it's so hard to own that, you know, in society today as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there is obviously the extreme that you don't want to go to, which unfortunately one of the characters does um, pass away from food as an addiction. Mm -hmm. But if you're healthy and you're strong like she is, 
it's really not a bad thing. Right, right. She accepts herself the way she is. And I do think that that is the goal mm-hmm. um, that every every woman and every man, too, should should be focusing on taking care of yourself, um, not just be judging by how much you weigh, but physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, you know, getting rid of the toxic people, mm. bringing the people you love in closer. And, um, and as for Emerson, you know, writing a character who weighs more than 600 pounds, mm-hmm. who does die from these complications, right. um, I wanted to show how you get to that point mm. and, and show it with compassion and respect because she's this wonderful, lovely character who has a lot to get over in life. Right. And she um, she isolates herself from the people that really love her the most and goes down this path that she can't turn back from. Right. And I personally, you know, uh, 57 years old, I've become done so many, you know, food workshops and trying to be accepting of myself and others. And I've like that I don't judge people by their externals like Mm -hmm. I used to, but I had always sort of been a little judgy about people who get to that extreme weight, that over the 400 pound mark. This book helped me have compassion and love for them because I said, oh, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. It's like when you read about alcoholics and you say, oh, why don't you just stop drinking? Right. You see why they can't. Right. So I think it's beautiful that you actually without trying or without looking like you tried, educate people about, oh, wow, I can feel sympathy. And not even sympathy, but empathy and compassion compassion. for that person. Right, right. I've gotten a lot of reader mail that says the same thing, you Mm. know, that I'll I'll never look at a person of size that way again. Right. Um, And also a lot of mail that where people are saying, you know, I've been dealing with this my whole life too. It doesn't matter how much we weigh. It's just, you know this messaging of, of look thin and lose weight and also enjoy this chocolate cake. And, um, you know, to, to say like, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm enough the way I am. Right. And I want to take care of myself. I want to be happier mm-hmm. and I'm not going to get there through dieting or, um, thinking I have to be a size six. It, it's all about the whole package. Yeah. The whole, you know, takeaway from the book that I got, one of them, Obviously, one was about friendship because I just love that now in my life, you know, friends are so important, but also the, that there's hope because they're just because a character dies in the beginning, you can learn from that. That's what she wanted. She wanted them to learn how mm-hmm. to take chances, how to go on with their life, how, how to stop saying, if only I lost weight, I could do this or that thing. So what I love is that message of, oh, okay. If she can do it in that book, I can do it. Because they're written so realistically, you don't go, oh, that's a fantasy. Right, right. And I, you know, I think like in fiction, in television, in the movies, we just don't see people of a lot of different sizes. You know, we we see one size. And um, to depict people having lives, you know, fully fleshed out, um, fully multifaceted characters who who are more than just beautiful or more than just fat, Mm -hmm. um, who are just people, you know, and to present them that way and that message of, um, you know, being okay with where you are and the things that come from that, once you have that, you know, both women Mm -hmm. um, do, I know you hate romance and you hate love, (laughs) but they don't. And um, so both of them, you know, find fulfilling relationships. They... um, cut out a few toxic people in their Mm -hmm. lives who have been the source of that messaging, Mm -hmm. that you're not good enough the way you are. And, um, yeah, I think it's a very hopeful book. Well, what I also loved was that none of the women lost weight in order to get a guy. Right. Um, Right. It sort of shows that there are people out there who, once you start liking you, will accept you as you are. Yeah, or even, like, it didn't matter to to the two men, the size of their their love interests doesn't matter. And I think women judge size a lot more harshly than men do. Oh, yeah. You know, there's that old saying, you know, if you want to please a man on a date, show up naked. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's all you have to do. I mean, done. I, I, mean, <laughs> I will never take off my clothes again. I'm just saying. I I shower in Are a you, robe. I want to save my, okay. my dignity. Uh, but it's it's really interesting, too, how, you know, I think we often criticize women the most 
-hmm. and we get criticism from other women the most and we dress for women right you right. know instead of just going what makes me feel good yeah and that you know uh you know men don't put themselves through that as mm -hmm. much now there is a male character in this book who struggles with size and oh, yeah. self-image and it's mm -hmm. the 14 year old nephew of one of the the main characters right and i wanted to include him because it's not just an issue for women you right. know i mean men are being subjected to the same kind of pressures now N not as much and for not as long but you know you can go to a plastic surgeon and get an mm -hmm. eight pack and mm -hmm. you know you can wear is it manx like the male oh yes spanx, spanx, yeah. right? <laughs> Oh my God, so spanks are so evil. Too. I know. I, I threw know all mine away. You know, I do enjoy the product if you have to be on TV or do something, but I'm not putting on spanks for a build. Yeah. I mean, I refuse. <laughs> Sorry, folks. So Lisa Lampanelli oh. is going without. Oh, no. But you, what I like about it too is the book, while weight is a serious and great component of it, they're having life struggles too. Yes. Because I don't think, you know, if we could work on our weight 24-7, great, um, you know, but other things intervene as well. Mm -hmm. So the book is very well-rounded, I think, for people who just kind of are going through romantic struggles or life things right. with their family Families, and yeah. friends and et cetera. Yeah. So it's good that they, it's very relatable on a lot of levels. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you learn anything about yourself while writing this? Yeah, I researched the book a lot before I wrote it because I wanted it to be more than about my own experience and, and psyche. So I, um, I learned a lot about the weight loss industry and mm. how it is rigged to fail, um, how, uh, how fat is a natural part of your physiology, how it protects you and serves you. Um, to a degree, and then what happens when you kind of pass that mark and go into the, the um, what's medically called super morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. But what I learned about myself was that I, I have spent way too much time being hard on myself, right. and um, and that in kind of like ripping off these scabs, mm -hmm. I was able to start really viewing myself differently. Mm. Um, so it was a book written for myself, the fat little girl who got kicked off the stage, right. as much as it was written for my readers. Wow. And uh, so parts of it are raw and, and really kind of gritty, honest, when the women are thinking about, about those messages that have stuck with them. Mm. And yet they do both get to that place. Um, and I think writing the book helped me get there too. Oh, I you love know? that. So yeah. it's healing for other people and also for you. Because yeah. Gloria Steinem, I heard her say in a documentary lately that she said um, the next step to healing ourselves is to healing others. Yes. So the book right. really can sort of go both ways, mm -hmm. which is nice. Now, as a um, author myself of the great non-bestseller, Chocolate Please, <laughs> I must tell you that mm -hmm. coming up with a title, to me, is the hardest yes. thing in the world. I couldn't stand it. That's a very difficult thing, whether it's for a play, a movie, a, a, a comedy special, a books. And you've had a, 20 books, yes? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How hard was it to come up the title? And please give a little explanation of what it means. Sure. So it is very hard to come up with a title. Um, and sometimes you come up with a great title, but another author has a book out the month before oh, yours of the same title. Right. I like my titles to have sort of a double entendre. Mm -hmm. um, so I've written a book called On Second Thought, or If You Only Knew, now that you mention it. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that came from the idea that um, what Marley and Georgia are taking on to, to break through the messages of it does matter so much how you look, that's a monumental task. Mm -hmm. And I sort of thought in the beginning, like, yeah, good luck with that, ladies. Like, <laughs> really, good luck getting right. there. And they do get there. And on the last page of the book, the phrase is slightly changed to be a little bit different in meaning. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I like I liked the title. I do like it as a double meaning. Yeah. Because at first I was like, oh, is she just saying good luck or is it yeah. sarcastic? And it's really nice how at the end it's like, wow, you know, you. they do have good luck. Yeah. Um, would you say out of, you know, out of your catalog of things you've written, would you say this is one of the ones you're most proud of? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was... It was not um, an easy subject to tackle. Mm -hmm. And it's got a tragedy in it of Emerson's death in the first chapter. Um, and it's certainly not easy to write about 
someone who is so far gone in her addiction that she dies, whether it's anorexia or meth or alcohol or food addiction. Addiction is not pretty. Right. And it was, um, it was difficult to write. And it was also difficult to kind of admit these things that we talk about because we're all feminists and we all are you know, trying to be very body positive and we live in this world where we know it's not um, our shape that matters. And yet we still have all this you know, this contradiction in the media and in, uh, you know, wherever you look. So it was a hard book to write, but I think it was, um, it, you know, all my books have this message of you're enough the way you are, you deserve good things, you might have to work on yourself to get those things, but this book feels like it's maybe important based on my readers' reactions, you know, the reviews that I'm getting that says, you know, there's not there's not a book that discusses this in this kind of raw way where the characters stay the same mm -hmm. physically, you right. know, where they, where they don't lose weight, where they don't like have this revelation and start measuring out their whole grains, you know, right. <laughs> they still eat cheesecake at right. the end of the book. And, um, and so I think it's a really important book for women, for, for men to see like the messaging that we get. One of my readers um, was listening to the book with her husband and he said, do we really do that to women? Mm. And she's like, hell yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and just, you know, to know that you're not alone in these feelings and that there is a better way. There is a place where you can get where you're taking care of yourself and that is not related to your size or your weight. Right, right. Well, I love that you did this because um, it's, it's deep, but not heavy, mm -hmm. which Thank I you. love. I'm not a big fan of um, fluffy literature. Right. So I'm so glad there's just enough meat. Yeah. Ooh, another food thing. <laughs> um, there's just enough to really sink your teeth into, and I, I, I just love it. Um, now, I know we have some questions right. from the audience, our delightful build audience, who is our first. Hi. Hey. Um, uh, I I really like the the mess um the message of your book and uh, uh, what you're setting out to do um uh, with this being such a uh, a powerful um, message that everybody should uh, um, learn to uh, to resonate with um what what kept you motivated in the writing process since this was something that really uh, hit close home to you that's a fantastic question um you know writing. My, for me, writing the first draft is always the hardest part of the process. And what kept me moving forward was, you know, was getting the women to that point, getting and getting the 14-year-old boy to this point where I wanted them to be happy. I believed in them. I was rooting for them. And I talk about them like they're, you know, separate characters who really exist. That's how they feel after a certain point. And, and my, my belief that this book would resonate and, and would be different because um, it shows the path to self-appreciation and self-care. It's not like a given where the character starts off there. So I felt like it was definitely a message that needed to be told. So thank you for that. Great question. And you know what I also like, just to piggyback off that, um, you do a list in the book of things. The woman, um, the, the girl starts off with her young girls at a camp, mm -hmm. at fat camp, and... Um, there's a list of things they said they were going to do when they're thin. Right. And uh, it's sweet because for the most part, it's things like, oh, you know, eat dessert in public or right. hold hands with a cute boy and things like that and uh, get a piggyback ride from a guy, which I'm still trying to get somebody <laughs> to do that for me. <laughs> and I think it's very sweet because no matter how old you get, those things are really, those should be enjoyed by everybody. Right, right. And, you know, they're, they're innocent, but they're filled with this longing of someday my life will be at a point where these things will just feel natural. Mm. And when they're writing the list and they're teenagers, they, they feel like this, this is somewhere far off in the distance. Mm. And um, so the book is kind of structured over these adolescent benchmarks, mm -hmm. which are edited and added to and explored a little bit more for why it's so meaningful right. to get a piggyback ride from a guy, you right. know, right. Um, it's, it's really not a life accomplishment, but what it says about your confidence and your, you know, your, uh, 
willingness to take a chance or something yes. is much more meaningful. Right. So if anyone wants to give either of us a piggyback we are ready, ready after yeah. the show, yeah. even we the wore women, pants I mean, just hey, for this. So. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have another question? Yes. Hi. Um, so this book seems to be a lot about self-love and self-acceptance. So I was just wondering if you had any tips or first steps towards self-love or self-acceptance for your audience. Well, I think um, one of the things to do is to acknowledge what your body can do right now. You know, um, if you're able-bodied, you know, you can walk. You can take a walk. You can, you can breathe well, you know. Um, I come from a very big family, and we have people of all abilities and, like, all over the spectrum of a physical ability, mental ability, and and to just kind of take stock of, I can walk, I can, I can swim. If I can't walk, maybe I'm really fast in my wheelchair, you know. Um, to acknowledge that you already have that, and then to look away from your physical self and say, I'm kind, I'm a loyal friend, um, I, I'm really happy in my own company, and to kind kind of celebrate those things and, and enjoy them. Don't just say like, yeah, but, to really say, yeah, no, I do. I'm happy in my own company, and that's a gift. I'm never lonely. Or, you know, I'm, I'm a kind person. Uh, I say something nice to every stranger who crosses my path. Um, and to, to really give those space and start to push the negative self-talk away. I love the idea of um, having a different sort of scale. Um, and instead of weighing yourself, you weigh what you did well today as far as acts of service for other people mm -hmm. or um, kindness to yourself. You know, every time you have a thought that's, oh, oh my God, my thighs are big, to sort of go, that's not going to go on the scale today. What's going on is my thighs are exactly where they should be and where they're supposed to be because they are. Like, we can't do really anything about it that minute. Right. So I just love kind of letting those evil, bad thoughts yeah. float away and having the good ones sort of replace them. And yeah. I don't think it's just, magical. I think it just happens, just, doesn't it? And it's it? just habit, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I went on a hike with my husband recently at a national park, and it was this hard, messy hike, and I'm 53, and I have a bum knee, and it took forever to get up there. When we got up to the top, there was this beautiful waterfall, and he took a picture of me standing under the waterfall like this, you know, mm. laughing. And as soon as I saw the picture, my first thought was, oh, I look fat in that picture. And then I'm like, no, 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 Higgins. No, you're, you're better than that. You look happy. Like, look at your face. You're so happy. You're covered in mud because you did it. You made it up those three miles. And you're seeing this beautiful waterfall. And that's what this picture is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about how chubby you look in the dress. So just kind of changing the narrative a little bit. I love that. that we all have I to do. I love that because it's definitely the first thing we go to. And right. all the filters and the ones that when we, you can shave off parts oh. of your thing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. That's a lot that goes into right. that. Right. Um, is there any other questions? Or Oh, well, right. damn, time goes by when <laughs> I'm so interesting. <laughs> Just joking. When you're so interesting, obviously. Chris, I can't thank you enough. I love doing events with you. I am just the biggest fan. Thank I'm so you. grateful Same that here. you involved me with this. And for more info on you, what is your social media? KristenHiggins.com, and you can find all my social media there. Yay. And thank you so much, guys. This was so much fun. Yay. Big hand for Kristen. <laughs> Woo.